So this is a really cool video. We're doing Schlieren photography on the Xbox Series X and on the PlayStation 5. And what that means, we'll pop up an example image of it, but basically we're able to image the air density gradient around the device to more or less simulate how the air is moving in the area of the exhaust for each of these two consoles. So this is sort of, it's not a thermal test. We've done one of those on the PlayStation 5 already. We have about half of the work done on the Xbox, but it allows us to see how the airflow patterns behave, particularly near the exhaust. And by using something hot at intake, we can also visualize the intake a bit. And all this is done using mirrors and a razor blade, a powerful LED, and some sorcery on the camera side by Andrew to leverage this mirror in a way that allows us to visualize the air density gradient change for the exhaust of the two devices. So this will be fun to look at, especially how the PS5 behaves because it's not quite as obvious. And then also the Xbox, which uh, creates some interesting air behaviors as a result of the concavity in the top of the console. Before that, this video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is a Linux server hosting provider that GN has used for nearly a decade now for its own servers. Alongside dedicated website hosting, Linode makes it easy to cut out third-party VPN services to build your own VPN that you fully control, easily configured via the interface. Linode also has hundreds of guides for custom servers, including game server apps like Rust, Minecraft, CSGO, and guides to host your own video calling servers to eliminate third parties. Linode is a great way to take back control of software and your hosting, and Gamers Nexus viewers get a $100 credit for 60 days on new accounts at linode.com slash gamersnexus or click the link below. So as for how all of this works, it's called Schlieren Photography. You've very likely seen it in other YouTube videos online, often used to demonstrate cool concepts. And uh, Veritasium, as an example, did a video on this quite some time ago. But what we've used it for thus far in the past is the RTX 3080. And we used it for the Founders Edition card specifically because of that flow through design. So it allowed us to show that the rear fan on the 3080, on the backside of the PCB, projects its air out in a, a very wide stance. So it wasn't a conical, just straight pillar of air like you might have with certain fans that are constructed in a way uh, so that the air is just blown straight through in as high velocity as possible. Instead, it was spreading out wide over the surface, which in some ways benefited the back of the card's uh, thermals as well because it gets some extra airflow over it. But in this one, what we're going to be doing is specifically looking at uh, this portion of the Xbox. So top exhaust, again, it's a concave surface that actually does influence the air path. And the fan is a, a large axial fan set into the surface about uh, 25 millimeters or so from the chassis housing. And then the PlayStation 5, on the other hand, has a large squirrel cage or blower fan up in the top. And this one projects all of its heat out the backside of the console at an angle down. So we'll be able to visualize that today. The whole solution cost us last year, it was about five grand or so because this kinetic mount is so expensive. The mirror is a very high quality mirror, super expensive. Uh, it's a parabolic lens basically. And you can build cheaper versions of this by using telescope lenses uh, that you might find on eBay, for example, and then you could DIY your own mount. But we wanted something with really fine control and something that would last us forever because we have plans to use this for a lot of things. And of course, our thanks to people who've picked things up on store.cameraxis.net, like our toolkits and mouse mats for making purchases like these pieces of testing equipment possible. This is set up about 10 feet away from the lens. So it's, it's roughly a 10 foot focal distance. And uh, that means it does take most of the office to use. So it's difficult to set up. We then set a razor blade right in front of the lens of the camera, just to make you extra nervous. And uh, we project a light at the mirror. And when it comes back, the goal is to split that light with the razor blade so that part of it hits the camera lens and part of it does not. And we explain all of this and show how it works in a walkthrough in our RTX 3080 piece, which we'll link in the description below. And we also talk about it briefly in our console testing methodology piece that's likely up already or will be soon if it's not. So that's the basics of how this works. This is fairly, in a sense, simple technology. It's just working with light, mirrors, and camera tricks. And the end result is that you can see air when it has a, a, a gradient in density. So if you're just imaging a room with no movement, no change of temperature anywhere near the mirror itself, the parabolic lens or the mirror itself, then you're not going to see anything. But when there's heat or when there's extreme cold, you'll see a difference. So uh, for ambient 
air that might be taken in through intake, we can't really see what's going on there unless we heat that air up or cool it down a lot. We're out of liquid nitrogen today, so we couldn't cool it down, but we were able to heat it up. And then exhaust is easy enough because it's already hot from going through the device. But enough of that, let's get into the testing and we'll show you how the, uh, how the air behaves coming out of these two cooling solutions. Let's look at some imaging. In this one, we had the Xbox Series X positioned with the top of the Xbox just below the bottom of the mirror. This setup will allow us to see most of the exhaust sends whatever is way above the console, and it'll give us an idea for how the concave vent projects the air upwards. We'll also test a lower position and a horizontal position for the Xbox. In this first clip, we're not really able to see anything yet, but that's expected. The console hasn't heated up, and it was only just turned on here. And since the air being exhausted is close to room ambient, there's only enough of a gradient in air density to see just a little bit of action. You can start to see some wisps of movement, but that's about it since it's just turned on. We put the Xbox into a game at full power consumption and we let it warm up a bit. The air is projecting up and inwards from the outsides or just straight up from the center. If we unfreeze the frame, you'll see that the outermost holes are projecting straight towards the center of the plume. Overall, this plume is mostly cylindrical in shape and is approaching a conical exhaust pattern. It's fairly high velocity flow and is almost completely unimpeded by the console's chassis. This allows fast flowing and wide area exhaust straight up and out. Okay, let me show you what's happening with this design. So the top of the console is what we really need to focus on for those images and we can get a closer look at the concavity of the top of the chassis, which is what's responsible for that flow pattern we were seeing. It projects the air from the outer edges against the walls uh, up and towards the center and the central holes are projecting basically straight up. And the reason it works that way is simply because uh, in addition to being concave, these outer edges of each of the circles is elongated. So because the plastic uh, is elongated down and creates a, a longer portion of the hole and because of the angle at which it is molded to direct the air, you end up with a pattern where the outside's projecting more conically while the inside is projecting more cylindrically. So in each of the corners, there are three holes that are fully or mostly obstructed by plastic. But this is by design for this one because there's sort of a baffle in there or a flow guide that's made of plastic. And it just uh, comes up and out at an angle and sweeps in to bind with the plastic in the corners here. So each of the four corners has three holes that's supporting the plastic flow guide underneath and it's by design that they're blocked because they need something to attach that flow guide to. As far as other aspects of the design, Microsoft has done well here to keep a high hole to plastic ratio, where the amount of plastic that's actually in the top panel of the chassis, we'll call it, is relatively low. So in between each hole, it's a fairly thin piece of plastic. There's enough there for structural rigidity, but not enough that they're wasting surface area that could instead be used for exhaust. We saw this, for example, with the Cooler Master Q300L case, where it looks like it, that case has a lot of airflow, but actually it just has a bunch of holes in it and then a lot more metal between the holes than the size of the holes themselves. In this instance, we've got a, a good ratio here where there's a lot of exhaust and the air, as a reminder, is coming out of this section, so that means it's coming in from everywhere else. This is a negative pressure setup. The air is going to come in through every other crevice in the case, except for this one, which is above the fan and is an exhaust, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. So we have our thermal probes coming out here for a separate content piece, but this is the intake, and we'll look at this more in Schlieren imaging in a moment. Uh, you'll also notice that the intake here, although there's holes in this part of the plastic, is completely obstructed, so about half of it does nothing. And then the bottom is where the rest of the air comes in. Uh, and underneath this base, there are not mo more holes. So you can remove the base, but it doesn't expose anything except for a solid piece of plastic. So what you see here is what you get in terms of additional intake paths for the air to come through. So there's one other design point I want to make before we get back to the other Schlieren imaging, which is that Microsoft has seemingly intentionally inset the fan pretty low in the chassis as compared to the roof of the case. So the top panel here, from here to the chat to the fan, is 26.2 millimeters or so. That amount of distance uh, 
uh, is particularly helpful because what's happening is, one, there's potentially a reduction in sort of turbulent uh, noise that would be a, a result of turbulence. But two, because the hub of the fan isn't pushed right up against the plastic and because the blades aren't pushed right up against the plastic, there's some room for the air to straighten itself out and follow the flow guide and to exit at a particular path, which again in the instance shown in that imaging ends up coming up like this, uh, almost conically at the edges and then a straight cylinder in the middle. As a simple experiment with few controls, we decided to just look at how the air behaved when we obstructed immediately above the console. This would represent an open back, open side media center that positioned a roof over the Xbox, but had no sides to contain the air. We held a nearby cardboard box about 10 to 12 centimeters above the exhaust, and we lowered and raised it a little bit to see how it behaved. You can see that the air slams into a wall, but because there's still room for it to get out of the sides, it escapes without any difficulty. This would be a problem if you had the Xbox Series X in a cabinet with the door closed, but if you've got something with open sides, you'll be mostly okay as long as it's not immediately bumping into a wall. If you had the ceiling of a media center directly above the exhaust, then there'd be a bit of a problem. In the next shot, we move the console down an additional eight centimeters below the bottom of the mirror. This allows us to see the exhaust plume and how it retains its shape and gets propelled away from the Xbox at a higher distance. It does overall retain the shape. It widens a bit, but the speed remains relatively high and the shape remains mostly cylindrical. So the next part is for imaging the intake. This is a little more difficult because Schlieren imaging can only see a change in density gradient of the air, which means we need an actual temperature change. So intake is going to be taking room temperature ambient in and then pushing it out as hot air. It's really easy to image exhaust because it's warm, but air that's going into the device is basically impossible for us to see with this current setup. We were out of liquid nitrogen when we were filming this. So instead of chilling the air, what we did was I took a map gas torch and I didn't light the actual flame like that, but instead just let it leak the uh, hot air, the gas out towards the console. And this is enough where it's, it's hot enough and there's enough flow that we can start to see it enter the console. Now, admittedly, this ended up uh, actually being quite a lot of movement on the Schlieren imaging, but it allowed us to see the initial intake. And, uh, and once we stopped, letting the um, running the map cast torch, we could see how the leftover air in the area would flow into the intake holes at the bottom. That piece of metal in there, that's actually part of the optical drive. So this particular vent uh, is mostly only useful for this bottom left quadrant. So there's not a lot of intake potential here. So for imaging this, the best we could do was just allow the hot gas out of the map gas torch to accumulate in this area and then once we let off of the, the torch, observe at what speed and direction the air could enter. The map gas torch's hot exhaust ran a little too fast, but still proved helpful. Initial intake was difficult to see when the torch first turned on, but slowing down footage gives an idea. Once we let off the gas and allowed it to settle, you can see most of the intake happens right at the HDMI port, relatively low down, while the upper half of this seemingly messed up section is useless. That's because if we look at the back of the console now and just some not clear and imaging footage, you'll see about half of the vents are obstructed, leaving only half available for actual intake. This is an inefficient aspect of an otherwise so far efficient design, and adding holes doesn't actually benefit us in any meaningful way here. The bottom of the console is similarly blocked off, and we're curious as to why, well, one, Microsoft wouldn't put holes in this plate, and two, even if they did, why they didn't at least put the holes in the bottom of the console under the plate so that if you run it horizontally, for example, you'd theoretically benefit from removing that plate and allowing the console to breathe in. But Microsoft left this area completely solid, so there's limited intake potential. We think this is a design oversight that would have benefited a lot of horizontal users. And Although it would potentially let more dust in to do what we're suggesting, the problem is with the current design for the Series X, there's still no dust filtration to speak of. So ideally what happens is they open up the whole bottom and then maybe add a standard dust filter, which would take care of both things and you end up with a better overall design in both dust 
and airflow. Okay, so this next part, we're gonna look at horizontal orientation of the Xbox. We've tested vertical now where it basically has, it's not a stack effect in the most literal sense, but it's just a chimney of air coming out of the top. When you lay it down horizontally, it is designed to do this because it's got these feet on that side. So it's meant to go down like this. That way, if you have a media center or some uh, box under your TV, it might be able to fit. Do be careful of how much you're blocking this off. You would probably want, for example, this to project into the room. We'll talk about that more later uh, because if you have this at the back of a piece of furniture with that's basically a shelf and it's enclosed at the back, then all that's going to happen is the hot air eject hits a wall and it'll be forced to eventually recirculate into the Xbox itself and that's not good. But anyway, so horizontal testing will look like this. And uh, one thing we'll also be able to look at is this hole here that is part of the exhaust. So this is above the fan. And in our testing, we simply laid it down like this, uh, which puts it face down on the optical drive. So not really necessarily the recommended use, but great for imaging, for Schlieren imaging. And our assumption, our educated guess, is that the hole is in here for acoustics. So our guess is that it's for dealing with uh, vibrational or resonant noise that might be generated from the fan if its only exit is the top. It's possible that this is also just simply an easier way to remove the panel once you get the screws out. And that is one of the easy ways to pull it out. But when I took the panel off, I just removed that screw and then flipped it over and it more or less fell out of place. So uh, not necessary. It could be a mix of exhaust and a, a convenient handle. But either way, we'll image it and see how it impacts the airflow. Here's a look at how it behaves. At the top left of the image, you'll see a high flow exhaust that's relatively thin. That's the vent. Again, it could be as innocent as giving a place to more maintain the console, but we have a suspicion it's for acoustic control. We'll be able to test this in our upcoming thermal and acoustic video for the Series X by simply blocking it off. The other aspect of this orientation is horizontal testing. We should remind everyone here though that this is not a thermal test at this point. That's a separate piece. This is just looking at the flow and the patterns of it. So the vertical versus horizontal airflow will largely be irrelevant to performance unless you're in a restricted environment. And now we need to talk about hot air rising. This is a point that people sometimes like to bring up whenever there's thermal testing going on. So hot air does in fact rise and it's something we can show in Schlieren imaging if for some reason you needed additional proof. But uh, even though hot air rises, Hot air will do whatever you want it to do when you hit it with a 1,000 RPM fan. So when you use a case fan in a computer, the hot air is going to go wherever this fan's pointing. It doesn't matter if it rises or not. The speed at which hot air rises passively is very slow. And so the point of bringing this up is if anybody out there wants to get into a debate over whether it should be oriented like this or oriented horizontally instead, and if that person then tries to use hot air rising as a justification for only ever using it like this, that is really sort of flawed. <laughs> the thermals aren't going to be that different. They might be a little different. We'll see it in our thermal testing. But the real reason to change the orientation of the Xbox is not because hot air rises, because there's a fan in there, and the hot air will go wherever the fan is directing it, which is out of the top of the case. The, the real reason to care is just uh, because of how your media center or furniture under the TV is, is positioned and how much space it allows for the positioning of the console. So you should position it based on how it fits with the furniture. Now also, this should seem obvious, but also make sure that these vents in the bottom are not <laughs> face down on the table like that, because then you've really got limited air. So by nature of the design, it'll have somewhere to breathe even if it's face down somewhere, but don't, don't do it that way. Back to the horizontal imaging. You can see similar flow out of what used to be the top of the console, except now it's directed to the right. There's a little bit of rise here, and we had this part of the device suspended in the air, so there wasn't an underlying table to reflect the air upwards. Finally, we can look at what happens when we suddenly cut power or shut the console down. Now, first of all, turning the power off for the Xbox leaves the fan spinning for a little bit afterwards. It's to help cool things down right before the fan goes inactive, so even though the components aren't under any heavy load anymore, they're still getting heat out of the box. This is a good thing. In this test, we allowed it to naturally come to a stop. Hot air rising starts to become more useful and obvious now. With power cut, we see an initial slowdown in the linear feet per minute flow, then passive drafting upwards. 
if we suddenly kick it on again, we can get a closer look at just how quickly the air starts moving. Okay, next up is the PS5. So the PlayStation 5 is designed a lot differently. The Xbox is following more of a, a mini ITX type of SFF design for the chassis. The PlayStation 5 is doing something completely unique to the PlayStation 5. And the way it's intake and exhaust is set up is pretty simple. So first of all, on the bottom, if, it, if you leave it standing up, typically there will be installed uh, one of these. And this is just a stand to help orient the console. So that goes in there. But this thing also sits in front of a couple of holes in the bottom of the console. And although these don't do a whole lot for airflow and they're not necessarily designed to, there is some air movement that, uh, that you'll see in clear and imaging in one of the uh, sets of images we did showing these with that removed. For the actual main flow path, in the front, there's a little bit of intake potential through this venting that comes all the way to the back here. So that's where the air goes in. And in our initial thermal testing, we took these panels off and showed that it does actually improve the performance. But uh, I'm going to remove them again just to show where things are. So there's the blower fan. It makes it really easy to see exactly what the uh, air pattern will be. So uh, we've got the blower fan here. Now, once this takes air in through this top section of the case, what it's going to do is send it down into a, uh, a fin stack with a whole bunch of angles in it. So some of it goes straight in, some of it will eventually enter in at an angle. And once you start turning air that many different directions, it will continue to lose speed uh, and pressure every time you turn the air a different direction. So that's potentially downside because it does slow down the air, but it directs it a really specific way out of the case. And again, our teardown footage shows how that uh, the fin stack is designed. What ultimately ends up happening is keeping in mind that there's normally a, a plastic shell over here. The exhaust will come out of these. And so what we want to show in our Schlieren imaging is when the exhaust is coming out of here, is there a specific area that it's coming out at a, a higher velocity? Is it more concentrated in one area than the other? Or is it evenly distributed across this whole vent? And looking at it as well, you'll see that it's almost entirely pointed downwards to project down and towards whatever surface it's sitting on. Uh, and, and so we'll be able to see that flow pattern in the imaging. We'll start by looking at the front of the PlayStation 5. In this image, the console is facing the camera with its signature lab coat style side panels installed. You can see the exhaust at the bottom of the image. This is behind the console and in front of the mirror. You can also see that the air is mostly propelled down and out to the sides. Now with the front on the left side of the image and the back centered on the mirror, you can see the console streaming air more rapidly down and out at the center of the device, while the top of the vent does little to rid of the air. That's because the fan is mostly below the level of those top section of vents, so this makes sense. If we next raise the console up to see more of the backside of the PlayStation 5, you can see that most of the exhaust streams from the middle of the case down and again out. There's minimal air exhausting out of the top section of the vent and out of the bottommost section of the vent on the back of the PS5, with most of the work being done right in the center. So it's not as evenly distributed as the venting alone might suggest. Next, we'll rotate the PlayStation 5 onto its side. You can see the air mostly streaming out of the back here once again, but overall, the surface area exposed as exhaust is significantly more limited than what the Xbox offers. And the flow path is also a lot less direct to the PS5. Now, again, this isn't a thermal comparison. It's just looking at the flow paths. So we'll have to look at benchmark numbers in a separate piece to see how it really works out thermally. The PS5 routes the air through more angles internally, which means more impedance to flow and reduced pressure with each turn. The Xbox takes a more direct approach. Towards the bottom of the console here, which is the closest to the mirror and farthest from the camera, a few holes on the bottom of the PS5, once you remove the support stand, slowly allow heat to draft out of the bottom and up right in front of the mirror. You can see this shown on the mirror as pulling exhaust. Once we turn the PS5 off, we're able to see the fan slow down before stopping, still pushing air out, but at a lower speed as it eventually ramps down and turns off. As the fan fully stops, we return to normal hot air rising without any forced convection. And finally, we stood it back up and left it alone for a little while. The flow returns to normal, as expected, and the main takeaway here is that air is shot out to the sides 
verified in the front-facing orientation, and then down, verified here, with the topmost and bottommost sections doing nothing. So that's it for this one. As a, a, a final reminder uh, for a third time, this is not in itself a thermal test. This gives us an idea to how the air behaves exiting the device and in some cases entering it. But in order to see the thermal performance and the efficacy of the design in an objective sense, we have to look at temperatures. And so we've done that for the PlayStation 5 already. That video has been online for a while now. You can see we have all these thermocouple readers and probes hooked up to the Xbox Series X. Uh, we've run through about half of the tests on this, but we keep adding more because it's an interesting device. So that's coming up hopefully soon. This time it, it looks like it's actually nearing completion at this point. Uh, and in terms of the what we learned from the Schlieren imaging, so while you can't draw super firm conclusions from it because of the limitations of testing like this, uh, it is more useful for these devices than it might be with an internal computer component because with these, that's what it is. It ships like that and you're going to use it like that. It's not like a PC where you have a case to consider and other fans to consider. Uh, so, so we get a bit more out of this than out of a PC component. What we got is that the Xbox exhausts in just a plume straight up. The outer edges project air up and inwards a bit. We would assume that's probably an intentional part of the design from Microsoft's uh, mechanical or thermal engineering team. And whether or not it is, it's a, a good solution to keep a high flow and get the air up and away from the device quickly and efficiently. This does mean that if you were to position this in sort of a standard IKEA type home entertainment stand with your TV on top, and there's a, a shelf maybe about right here, you are going to run the risk of that air immediately, it will hit and it will bounce down. And then the risk is just that it might end up recirculating and you just end up with higher temperatures than necessary. So just be mindful of where you position this. The Xbox specifically is fairly easy to deal with. Our recommendation as stated earlier is if you position it horizontally and you might have walls in the, the cabinet or the uh, home entertainment system space that you put this in, get it so that this fan on the top in the current orientation is projecting out into the room and taking air in uh, from the back of the cabinet. The PlayStation 5 has a fairly predictable pattern if you look at the back of the device, but the very top portion of the venting doesn't really get much use, and the very bottom portion down near the power cable doesn't get much use. So most of the exhaust is happening in between those. It's probably about the middle 70% or so of the venting, and it goes straight down and back. So that's the Schlieren photography for the two devices. The Xbox is the easiest to understand because it's basically an SSFF ITX PC where it's just a, a funnel. There are definitely things that can be improved on this, and we'll talk about that more in the thermal video. It is overall a, a pretty efficient design, though, with some shortcomings like blocking off venting where there's clearance issues with internal components or not having more holes in the bottom of the device if you decided to take off the stand that it's on. The PlayStation 5 we already talked about in a separate video, so you can check that one out. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting this type of content and making it possible for us to buy equipment like this. Uh, this is a high-end solution for Schlieren photography, and it'll allow us to do some, well, it'll, as we expand our camera equipment next, it'll allow us to take high resolution, good quality images for this. So it might become justifiable at some point to buy a lens that could attach to a high-speed camera to allow us to get the same 10-foot-ish focal distance, focal length, but run a higher FPS to slow the footage down. The problem right now is we have to zoom in really tight on this and the only camera we have that can get that far of a reach and produce a good image is cat 60 FPS and can kind of do 120 sometimes. So that's the next step. But for now, it's pretty interesting data and you can still take away how the devices perform. So if you want to support this type of work, as always, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net where you can pick up our mouse mats, toolkits, and other products like shirts, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get bonus footage and behind the scenes videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.